Howdy, Possum Patty here. And last night when I was uploading my mushroom-shaped journal video, I got some ideas on what to do for the cover. So this is going to take me a little while. So first I need to uh, dash about the room and maybe even outside to find the items that I need. So come on along. My very first thought was to get out some of this scrap sort of satin and lace material and cover the top of the mushroom. Oh, this is where there was a, um, like a cluster over here. I could put that cluster back on. <laughs> Big bits of gl dried glue there because I think this fits like perfect across the bottom see that doesn't fit hmm okay I can put something over that because there's just a bunch of dried glue here I don't know if I can get that off maybe okay I'm not going to worry about that I will cover that with something and then I have this little Irish linen doily I got it at the flea market. I got this at the flea market too. And I think I'm going to cover the bottom of the mushroom with that. Now this is only just the beginning <laughs> because I was thinking of making a little mushroom fairy house. So I want to put a window with some shutters and a fairy inside and then maybe a little frog down here or something on the stem. So the first thing I'm going to do, I think, is cut these two pieces to fit the mushroom. And then think about the window. Okay, I'm just playing here with different things. I cut the pink satin and lace to fit the top of the mushroom. And I left the lace at the bottom, but I, I cut it off of here. And I think I'll sew it. So it's like a double layer instead of just cutting it all the way off. And then I cut the uh, Irish linen here to fit the stem. And I have this fabric frog. It came off of this panel. I bought this at the flea market too. And I wanted him to sparkle. So I, I might sew this green netting over him. I might. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Did have a little piece of that just happened to be sitting on the table here. Left over from when I was doing the inside of the book. So I'm thinking about making a window sort of in the shape of the top of the mushroom. I was thinking about, you know, like going through some magazines and looking for a picture of the window, but I think I'll just... I think I'll just wing it. I think I'll just wing it. And then um, I cut out a bunch of pages from this fairy tales book I got at the book sale for like a quarter. <laughs> and I, I cut out a bunch of elves and um, little frogs and love that one. Little fairies. And even a castle. So, but before I do that, I've got to design a window. It's not going to be too perfect of a window, just a quick window. I was thinking about using my, I don't know where it is, I thought it was over here. All right, let me find my pen, my elegant writer. This is a brown one. Now, this is the pen that um, you can use some water with it. Do I have water here? <laughs> I guess I should prep, huh? Yep, I have water. I do have water, and all I need is a brush. Maybe that works. 
So I was, how do you make it look like a window? <laughs> how do you make it look like a window? Okay, so I'm going to draw a line around the edge and then probably put some window panes in it like that. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I know that's a weird shaped window, isn't it? And I'll probably take my X Acto knife and cut the window panes out. Ooh, and then, you know, when you're doing, you get more ideas. You got to do. You know, you can't sit around and say, oh, I don't have any ideas. Just start doing something. Because once you start, then you get more ideas. I'm going to activate this with water in just a second. I hope I'm not waiting too long. <laughs> Get some water on there, quick, quick, quick. I want to put another brown line like around the edge, but I don't know how long this ink can sit before you can activate it. So I'll let it dry and then I'll do that part. The Elegant Writer is a calligraphy pen, but it does wondrous things when you add water to it. Like if you use the black one, it, it you get some pinks and some greens and some blues. I'm just using the brown one right now for the window panes. I'm going to go find some clear, while this is drying, I'm going to go find some clear plastic to put, you know, for the window panes. I just wanted to put a darker line around the edge. Okay, now I am going to cut out the window pane. I found this plastic. I don't know what it's from. But it'll do for a window. This is my Dollar Tree knife. I should probably invest in a better one. Just a piece of cardboard. Uh, that got a little bit easier as I went along. I held the knife at a much lower angle because that brown ink, that blade is um, really at an angle. There's probably a better one in here, yeah, to do that with. Probably that one there. Probably need to change this and see if this one works better. It's all in having the right tool for the job. Okay, probably should have done that before. Okay. Now I said I would put some more brown. <laughs> I had to dip the pen in there. No, that's not good. Not good. Now I have to see which fairy will fit best in the window. And then I'm going to think about a shutter. Oh boy, it's getting dark. I bet you it's going to rain any second now. So I'm going to run outside and look for some tree bark to use as my shutter. Well, I was certainly right about that. It started raining as soon as I got outside. Okay, I put some beacon glue on here hoping that it will 
hold the plastic down. Looks like it's working pretty good. My window panes. I just glued the window to the plastic, put some weights on it, and let it dry for a sec. And let's hope it sticks. And there's my window. <laughs> Froggy in the window. Now we're going to put a fairy in the window. And I grabbed some bark and I just put it in the microwave for a minute because barks are full of living things. <laughs> there is a lot of living creatures on a piece of bark. So I thought I would, I wonder if that killed the uh, lichen on there. I don't know. But I'm also going to um, put a, a ton of, um, Hmm, maybe Sparkle Mod Podge or something on there. Let's see how big of a piece I need. So it's going to go on here. And I think... I was going to cut a hole in the fabric, but I think maybe I'll just back the fairy. So I don't have to worry about cutting into that lace. And then this has got some beautiful lichen on it. Very crumbly, but the Mod Podge will help that. I want this to be a real combination of fabric, drawn items, cutout items, lace, natural items. Just, just do it up. Do it up with as many things as I possibly can. All right, I'm going to shake that off. So I was thinking of even sewing some more sequins around on here or hand stitching this. Or machine stitching it to the book or something like that. All right. But first things first. <sighs> Got my window. <sighs> this is now full of tree bark. <sighs> and I'm going to stitch my frog after. Ooh. This is going to be a major project here. All right. So I'm going to use these two pieces, I hope. And douse them in Mod Podge. I'm brushing off the loose bits. I do sometimes dry leaves and flowers in the microwave, and I use some ceramic tiles to either press them between the ceramic tiles. In this case, I just put the tiles on top of the bark and then ran it through the microwave for a minute. So I hope that's enough to kill anything living on there. Not that I want to kill living things, but you don't need to creep the creepy crawlies in my journal. I was looking for pieces of bark that had character. I wonder if this could be like a window box. <laughs> Maybe I'll do an extra piece. There's always more bark where this came from. We had a lot of dead trees cut down and they have not been taken away yet. Okay, let me get the Mod Podge. Okay, I think I'll douse the back of these just with some clear gesso just to seal them up. I really don't. <laughs> I really shouldn't pour it directly on there, should I? And lunch. Mr. Possum yelling for lunch already. It's not lunchtime. I know I'm working early today. But I figured this would turn into some sort of a major project. And it would take me all day to just go about finding objects. 
and then working on each piece and then assembling it all together I don't work very fast at all do I no I work very very slowly I'm hoping that putting lots of acrylic medium on these pieces of wood will help preserve it and I'm just going to put a ton on there and hopefully it will soak in to all those areas okay <laughs> that's going to take a while to dry well these bits are probably dry enough it's supposed to dry clear so <laughs> hopefully it'll dry clear they're not quite done yet well if it doesn't dry clear it'll just look like they've been whitewashed right <laughs> oops okay now I'm going to put some of my fave sparkle mod podge this one is extreme glitter and because these uh Pieces of bark are just a little bit crusty. I'm going to pour it in a cup. And it's a fairy house, so they need some sparkle on their shutters. And it looks like this is going to take quite a while to dry. It's sort of a very damp, cool, rainy day, so I guess that's probably not helping any either. <laughs> the lichens look like they're turning yellow. I could put some green paint on them after if I wanted to, right? So I have these on a sheet of plastic so they don't stick. Stick to the paper. I guess that gesso kind of sealed everything in pretty good. It's not really shedding anymore. Okay, while these are drying, well, I'm going to go wash this out. Okay, I'm just putting the extra back in the jar. I'm going to wash my brush. I'll put those back down on the floor to dry. And work on another part. There's going to be a lot of parts to this cover. Well, I could work on the window. I still have to sew this together. So inside the window, I'm going to have to shuffle through all these pages. And... Always moving stuff, aren't I? Shuffle through all these pages and find a fairy that's going to look like she fits in the window. These little elves crack me up. There could be little shoemaker elves in the, in the window. <laughs> elves, fairies, gnomes. A little frog. All right, I'm going to flip through here and find a fairy that'll look just right in this window. Okay, this may be hard to do. I don't know. I'll be right back. Oh my gosh, I just picked up my window. <laughs> there was no window pane in it. And I'm like, where did it go? <laughs> I found it under the cardboard. So I guess the beacon glue did absolutely nothing to hold the plastic onto the window. So I am now trying the E6000 Industrial Strength Adhesive. So hopefully this will hold it. It says don't breathe it in. So I'm going to hold my breath here. Got a little bit on the thing, but that's not too bad. All right, so I cut out these fairies because they'll fit in the window. I can get their faces in like, like that. But they need a background. So what does it look like inside a fairy's mushroom house? Do they have polka dotted wallpaper? <laughs> That's a little busy. Here's pink with little tiny polka dots. 
Yeah, they show up very nicely on that. And the mushroom is pink. Do they have yellow stripes on their wallpaper? That is not too bad. Or do they have pink bricks? <laughs> pink bricks inside their mushroom house. That actually doesn't look too bad, does it? Hmm. I kind of like it because, you know, it's kind of pink, but it's also a bit, you know, rustic. Oh, and there's some bits with flowers down here. It might be a little too busy. I don't know. I think I'm going to go with it. I think I'm going to go with it. Something like that. All right, let me cut this out. You can see that there's some plastic on there. You can see the fairies through the window <laughs> with a little bit of pink brick in the background. And let's just hope the E6000 holds this together. So we're going to give this a few minutes to set. So bit by bit, we're getting the pieces done. So I think now, I'm putting everything down on the floor. Uh, let's see, on this part for the stem of the mushroom, I think I'm just going to sew this frog with some glitter down on here. So I'm going to go away and do some quiet sewing, and then I'll come back. And then I'm going to do some sewing on the top. And I don't know how long it's going to take that bark to dry, but I'll just go ahead and work on these parts and we'll see, see how far I can get today. All right, I've been working on my little frog on the stem of the mushroom, and I decided that I needed to put some background stitches in the neutral colors of what this piece of linen is before I put the frog on. I don't know that it makes a great difference or not, but I felt like I needed to do that. I just made some long running stitches and then I was going to outline the frog in black. But once I started with the black, I decided to go over all the lines, all the lines. So let me grab that other frog down here on the floor. So, so I went you know, like around the head and around the legs and everything. And then, you know, you have to remember I put that uh, netting over him. And then I decided to do the mouth and the eyes. I made little French knots for the eyes. And then I decided to do the warts. <laughs> and I made more French knots for the warts. I tried to make them a little bit smaller, like... When you make a net, French knot, you wrap the thread around the needle. So I did three times for the eyes and two times for the big warts and once around the needle for the little warts. And oh, he's so cute. He's so cute. I think he hopped here from the Doki Doki Forest because he's just so cute. <laughs> so I turned a frog that looked like that into this little frog here. Now this is going to go on the stem. So I was going to try to sew this on with the machine. So maybe I'll go do that now and see how that looks. And there's how he looks all sewn into the mushroom stem. I just went around with some pink thread and then I put a little extra pink zigzag there at the bottom. And I've got my super cute little frog there. Love him. All right, now I've got to do some hand stitching on this. I've got to sew this lace on here and I'm thinking about doing something around the edge maybe adding some crystals or something sparkly for the fairies and you know that window window hasn't really dried in the back yet 
and my pieces of bark have not dried yet either. So I think what I'm going to have to do is, and I wanted to finish this, but you know, can't rush it, can't rush it. All right, this is my idea so far. My little frog under there. Like that. Um, I've got my, got my pink thread out here. <laughs> Ready to do some more stitching on this. But it seems like I'm not going to get much further tonight because I don't want to do anything else to these while they're not completely dry. Once they are completely dry, I am thinking about adding this foam to the back. Just as support, because I have a feeling these are going to break. <laughs> Just as support. And then I have another idea to add something else to this to help me get it sewn down to this top of the mushroom. But you can see where I'm going anyway. I got a few more ideas. Ideas keep popping in my head. And yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to do in the back yet. I'm going to do something on the back too. Not the same as what's on the front, but I will do something on the back also. All right, I keep playing my little frog. I love my little frog. And I love the fairies peeking through the window there. And these, I mean, I hope I can use them. It's my whole idea was to use these as like shutters. And um, yeah, I have to wait till they dry. That's it. So did I say this already? I probably did. I'm just going to go in the other room, put my feet up, do some special stitching on the top piece, play around with it a little bit while I'm waiting for these to dry, and then I'll get it all together and come back <laughs> for, oh my gosh, day three of <laughs> the Magic Mushroom Journal, I guess. It's going to take me that long. i just amazed how quickly some people can do things and how it just takes me forever. <laughs> course I'm waiting for these to dry so and it just happens to be a rainy cool damp day so there's nothing I can do about that so uh, stay tuned happy junk journaling bye bye